what I have to say may save your life, may save the life of a loved one, or may save a stranger's life, and indeed a stranger's child. Driving is a very important activity, but it's a very dangerous activity. And if you get in an accident, even if you don't kill anyone, there is also civil liability, and you may be sued for negligence. And if the suit, if there's a big judgment against it that your insurance doesn't cover, it could wipe out your retirement savings. If you're driving your daughter's car or some family member's car, they might be sued as well. The theory being that they were negligent in allowing you to drive their car. Why do we become bad drivers? As we age, there's a list of factors. First of all, our response time. We're slower. We don't react quite as quickly. Our sight may fa falter, particularly night sight. Driving in the dark is, becomes very risky. Hearing is a problem, too. People tend to lose their hearing. We also lose muscle strength and flexibility. We may be drowsy because of medication. And we may be drowsy because of booze, because we lose our tolerance for booze. Now, there is no age limit that people should automatically stop driving. What about dementia? Even in the case of a mild dementia, many physicians recommend that that, added to the factors I just talked about, is reason enough to stop driving, just at the diagnosis. How can you make your driving safer? First of all, go see the physician. Many of the conditions I just talked about are correctable if there's a medication that's making you drowsy. If you have a hearing loss, that can be corrected. A sight loss can be corrected. You might want to also start working out a little bit. Get some of that old heft back, some of your muscles. Get some more flexibility. AARP has programs for safe driving that you might want to go to, look into. And there are also private, uh, private driving schools that would help elderly people driving. Now, there are also mechanical things you should check for. Low tire pressure, by the way, is a major factor in automobile accidents. So check your tires. You're also, you can get different mirrors that will have a better view of the back, and those are things to look at. Driving makes sense. A few th quick things on how to drive. Left turns cause most or many, many accidents. You can go, go around the block once and avoid left turns. Daylight hours are much safer than night driving. Driving in areas you know are much safer than driving in areas you don't know. It's also a very good idea to take some along with you while you drive. And be sure not to be rushing. Give yourself time to get where you have to go. Now, at some point, you're going to have to quit or you're going to have to at least cut back. Don't trust yourself on making that call. A survey for another purpose asked, you know, scores of people, are you a better than average driver? 90, 95% of people think that indeed they are better than average. And you probably do too. When you are moving, if you're also, another thing about driving, if you're going to move to a new house, Ask yourselves, I mean, I'll be driving now, but down the road, if I'm not being able to drive, does this house, does this location make sense? How am I going to get to the grocery store? How am I going to get to the theater? How am I going to get to visit friends? Now, there are places for people that can't drive to get rides. A good place to start is called the beverlyfoundation.org. And they will help you maybe find someone that will help you drive. And there are a lot of programs like that at a local level, or get people to, to give you rides. How should you know? I mean, let, let's say, let's change the viewpoint here, and if you have, a, have an elderly parent, at what point, how would you know that they should stop driving? You might want to suggest that they go take a, a driving test, and most local uh, motor vehicles have, will give the person a test to see if they are still capable of driving. Obviously, you want to ride with them. One thing is if they are erratic in speed, they go too slow or they go too fast. I remember when I was uh, you know, maybe four or five, we visited my grandfather, grandfather in rural Iowa. 
And when we were on the regular roads, he would go what we thought was at least five miles an hour. But then for some reason near his house, there was a dirt road, a single dirt lane between two big bodies of water. And it was maybe a quarter of a mile long. And when we got on that, he would just floor it, which was terrifying for us. Uh, but obviously that was uh, something to, to look at. Also, if, if, you know, if your loved one drives too close, just keep track of how they drive. And you want to ask yourself, would I want my child to, be in, to drive with this person? And if the answer to that is no, probably you don't want any other children to be endangered by that person. Now, how do you, of course, the hard thing is, when you tell someone they have to give up driving, that can be absolutely devastating. People have told me that that, a nurse once told me that when she was told she had to quit driving, it was kind of like when she would have to tell people that they had a terminal condition. That's how serious it is. One way you want to do it is to involve the person. Early on, it would be good, you know, while they're still driving, to talk about, well, what should we do if you can no longer drive. And even might even have them sign an agreement, which would be, you know, it once, if Dr. Braunemann and my son Joe think I shouldn't drive anymore, I'll stop driving, to get them committed to at least thinking about that. Whether or not they'll leave up, live up to that agreement, of course, is, is up to them. Uh, you might, let's say that, that that hasn't happened, and you think they've got to stop driving, or at least really cut back. You can have what's kind of like an intervention. You can have some of the family members, maybe some clergy, maybe even a physician to talk to them about the dangers that you have noticed and how not only how it impacts them, but how it impacts your family. That, you know, you know Dad, I, I just can't have my kids drive with you anymore. One thing you also want to be doing, though, is to say, how can we tell Dad hey, listen, once you stop driving, it's going to be okay because we can do X, Y, and Z to take care of that problem. That is, they'll be worried about what I'm, how am I going to get to the store if I quit driving. And if you can answer those questions, it will go much better. Another way, you know, if you don't want to talk to your loved one, maybe you can get their physician to do that. You might want to phone motor vehicles. They might have some ideas. And some people, over the course of time, are very, very persistent. You know, and it may end up uh, hiding the keys, deflating the tires, and things like that, because some people just won't give up driving. In conclusion, let me point out that drivers over 85 are nine times more likely than someone under the age of 50 to be involved in a fatal accident. So this is very, very serious stuff. Someone once said, that they wanted to die like their grandfather, quietly, peace, asleep. They didn't want to die like his passengers died, the passengers in the back seat who were screaming and kicking.